everyone, and welcome back to the MTG Goldfish Podcast, episode 141, your weekly podcast covering everything Magic the Gathering related. Your host, as always, Richard, the owner of MTG Goldfish. What is up, Richard? Hey, guys. What's going on? Doing well, Richard. Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, our resident jank brewer and all-around content creator. What is up, Seth? Uh, not much, guys. Just waiting to start playing some Ixalan action. Today's the day yep. on Moto, but I gotta I gotta wait till the podcast is done. I told you precast. Uh. I was thinking about just drafting while we were <laughs> casting, but I figured that was a bad idea, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait. I think you could have got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. It, oh, <laughs> saying I'm not is exactly okay. what someone would do who was drafting during a podcast. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, you can find us on Google Play, iTunes, mtggoldfish.com, and now on YouTube. So on the docket today, uh, not a whole lot. Uh, I know we said last week might be a short week, ended up going the full time. Uh, but we really only have to talk about the pre-release. Uh, there's nothing really crazy as everybody is just kind of waiting for Ixalan to kick into rotation and be in standard and everything kind of just changes. So uh, we will talk about that. Richard is pretty much the only one that went. Uh, I got – there was no more slots for a two-headed giant that I wanted to go to. And Seth will let us know about his uh, online uh, pre-release. And then we have fish mail. So, Richard – how did the pre-release go? Bad news. Bad news. <laughs> it, it may just be my pool. It may have just been a small sample size. But this was the least fun pre-release in terms of gameplay for me. Uh, overall, oh. it's still you know pretty cool pre-release. There are some people dressed as pirates and people wearing Jurassic Park shirts and whatnot. So people were on theme. But gameplay-wise, it felt really underpowered. It, it was just strange like there are a lot of bears in the deck uh in the set sorry uh you get these weird pools where you get some pirates some dinosaurs some merfolk but not enough to build a cohesive deck and the mechanics just just didn't do anything for me like raid and explore were not that interesting treasure tokens were not that cool like i much prefer the mechanics we've seen you know, two to eight clue tokens were much more fun. Embalm, Eternalize, the thing that makes servos or plus one plus one counters, which I can't remember. I, I felt, you know, this was like the weakest set of limited mechanics we've seen in a while. It just wasn't too interesting for me. Wow. What was wow. in your pool? Like, did you open anything sweet? My pool was possibly the worst pool of all time. <laughs> My so win con was Argyle's Bloodfast. So this is the card I loved, right? The pay two mana, two life draw card. It flips into a land that sacrifices a creature to gain life equals his toughness. I had two uh, four mana, one seven dinosaurs. So I throw up a great wall, block everything, pay life to draw like five cards, get ahead. <laughs> and then sack them to not die. <laughs> and my win cons was uh, the five man of four four uncommons that you can pay two life to give it flying or pay two life to give it vigilance. And four four was literally the biggest creature in my entire pool. And I had two of those and that's it. Uh, so do you think there's any chance that your pool was just horrible and that in the format is better than your pre-release actually showed because your pool was so bad? I don't know if there's more powerful decks. So I actually went 2-1, and I just played other decks that looked like mine. So I don't know if that was a coincidence, or it's just everything is small. But I think I think the mechanics are just not as interesting. Like, they just kind of do stuff, and I think the problem of getting one-third of a tribe, another third of a tribe, and not getting anything cohesive is is going to be a problem going forward at least in sealed right in draft you can control that more but in sealed it's just whatever you have and if there's anti-synergies there's anti-synergies but but i don't know it was it was still like a fun event for like a pre-release but in terms of gameplay of the sets i think this has been the weakest of the past couple sets which you know every time i went away i'm like oh this is the greatest pre-release ever this is the greatest pre-release ever and then x was like a total 180. <laughs> it was like, this was probably the worst pre-release ever. So it was quite interesting. But small sample size, small sample size, just one pool, three rounds. So uh, maybe if I play some more Emoto, uh, I'll get a different opinion. Did they, they... I didn't even see if they like did anything interesting with the boxes or anything like... Did you get anything cool or anything like that? Uh, it's just a 
like a box and then there was a like a D20 in it. But you didn't have like that the a... the thopter construction or or whatever. Oh, uh, that's a shame. You didn't um... get the embalm punch out cards because there's no need for right, it this right. time. Uh, the checklist cards look cool. I don't know if we've seen the checklist cards uh, prior to this, but they they look kind of different from the Innistrad ones, and they look pretty cool. Nice. Um, I did see. I mean, again, this could just be your experience, Richard. I saw a lot of people having fun, but again, I don't know if that directly correlates to like, oh, this is a great, you know, sealed uh, environment. Now, again, you know, sealed could be, like you said, a little weird uh, because I even did see in those same like tweets, they would have like pools with like Admiral Beckett Brass and then like a vampire and like Gisanth and they're like, oh, this is fun. But like, I'm like, what are you supposed to do with that? You have like three different tribes. So, and they're all in different colors. So, but you're right. In draft, you can kind of control that a little bit more. But maybe people just had fun regardless. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Lots of lots of pirate dressed people and stuff. <laughs> no, no one in a dinosaur suit. I was expecting a dinosaur suit, like you know the the T Rex dinosaur suit you yeah, always see yeah, on social yeah, yeah. media. No one at my store did that. I was disappointed. Uh... I should have did that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the draft will be a lot better. I'm yeah. I'm not a huge fan of sealed anyway. Like if I have to choose between limited, I'm always going to choose draft because I just enjoy it more. But it seems like it solves at least some of the problems that Richard uh, was talking about as far as sealed go. Uh, did you have an impression of how everyone else felt? Like was the overall mood like people were kind of like in eh, Ixalan, or were other people having fun at your pre-release, or couldn't you really tell? Couldn't really tell. I mean, my opponents seemed pretty eh, but maybe because we were playing with very two <laughs> underwhelming decks. It's like, you know when you do, like, Pop or Commander or something, and you're both trying to progress the game, but your cards just aren't cooperating, and it's just dragging out. Oh, like, I had yeah. games where I was going to deck myself from drawing too many cards, and I just couldn't muster enough like power and toughness to like punch through and win the game that sounds wonderful that's, that, that sounds that's wonderful. my dream my dream game of magic <laughs> it's also interesting that the mana fixing is a bit weaker in terms of lands but you have treasure tokens which give you any colored mana so you see some people going like crazy greedy like five colors like splashing double colors uh, without actually any land supporting it, just relying on the strength of treasure tokens, and wow, sometimes it works beautifully. Other times it's very awkward. <laughs> so much. You, you see like three gold cards in their hand, and it's just like nothing is overlapping. Okay, well, I mean, uh, I don't know how much more there is to say about that. I mean, do you? I don't know. <laughs> like, if this, if you weren't even a, like enjoying the mechanics, I guess like. It I is, think the mechanics is, kind of is, is probably is. the, the like, like the the other sets had a lot of interesting things. You had the monuments, you had the gods. Right. There was a lot of stuff to look forward to, whereas Explore, Explore is actually very, my, my take on Explore is down. Many times you just draw that land when you need that plus one, plus one counter. So a lot of times things just go very wrong for you <laughs> with Explore, but. Yeah, this is definitely one of those sets that it feels like sealed is going to be really swingy but draft will probably be a, a lot yeah better, i think so i think draft control. will solve the tribal problem i don't think you're gonna have that and you're there are some sweet tribal synergies issues. i played uh, a person who had a full dinosaur deck and they totally wrecked me like they played one drop the the thing that ramps your dinosaurs by okay. one they had carnage tyrant they oh. had the seven mana six six trample. Oh. They had the enrage one where when it gets hit, it gets all your creatures get plus one plus one. And then they had instant speed fight just to blow you out in mid combat. <laughs> That's scary. So so if you get all the good pieces, uh the deck is actually quite fearsome. So I expect to see that in draft a lot, where you can actually draft all your dinos and get something cohesive going. Yeah. Uh final thoughts? Uh, we gotta play more. Gotta play more <laughs> to to see how it goes. 
Yeah, I'm excited to give it a shot on Magic Online. It's pre-release events start today, and I think we're streaming one tomorrow for the stream, so I'll be able to give my impression uh, shortly. So I think I will try a seal just to see how it matches up with Richard's thoughts, but when I'm playing for fun, I'll probably mostly draft. Yeah. So are, are you actually able to draft right off the bat? You are. They change it so okay. you can do both right away now, thankfully. Nice. Thank you. But can <laughs> I play good. it on Magic Arena? Ah, <laughs> oh, that'd be great. All right. So... Oh, there was nothing at the pre-release for Magic Arena, by the way. I thought you were supposed to get a code yeah, or something. Yeah, weren't you supposed to get codes? You're supposed to get a code or something, but then they said it wasn't relevant. Like, I, I don't understand, but you basically didn't get anything. Huh. That's they were supposed to just hand them out, weren't they? They said there was nothing to hand out. You get like a treasure token or something. It's just like you just say you went to the pre-release and you just get to sign up for the beta or something. Oh. I don't know, well, but I, I didn't get nothing in my pre-release pack or anything special. Oh, so oh, I okay. maybe I can jump to the front of the line then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess that leads us to fish mail. We're skipping straight to fish mail. All right, if you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail, and we'll get to your questions on air. Tactics Ogre TKOL, can you do a year end financial recap after iconic Masters releases to show the financial impact of modern decks in 2017? Uh, yeah, sure. I think we'll probably I, do that. Yeah, we can, we can swing that, Seth. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Next question, Legendary Hero 7. Have you considered brainstorming deck techs using cards from a set before it's officially released? Hmm. So I definitely make decks in articles and so forth before the set is officially released, but I haven't ever really done deck techs for them. For some reason, I don't know. I've never been a fan of deck techs that don't have the possibility of gameplay because it seems really easy to just like throw stuff together so i don't know if that's something you'd be interested in with future sets definitely let me know in the comments but i don't know i have mixed feelings on it all right bob the ninja 386 the closest they can print to duels and standard would be a revolt dual land enters untapped with revolt that's it? actually a really good solution because if yeah. you fetch for it it comes into play untapped yeah, yep. doesn't I that actually like just that. make it better? Land. Well, it's worse from your hand, because you would play your underground seat tapped from your hand, most likely. But if you're fetching for it, it comes into play untapped. I don't know that'd be enough. I mean, turn I one, know. you yeah. can't do anything, but you can also, like, crack a fetch to fetch something else, and then play the revolt land from your hand. Right. Uh, you can actually have stuff just yeah. die. I don't know if more often than not, they're worse. Like, they almost seem like they could be better sometimes. I would play some of these. Maybe I wouldn't yeah. replace all of my shocks, but I would repl I would play some of these in modern, I think. Oh, yeah. oh, in modern, yeah, I think there's definitely an argument. I don't think they're as good as the original duels. So. Oh, of course, yeah, but... All right. uh, Lord Horus, how do I find my perfect commander who fits my playstyle? Uh, wow, that's a tough one. I just never we would need cast to know your my, play style. <laughs> I just never cast my commander, so problem solved. I don't have to deal with those questions. <laughs> I, I mean, just it's, play whatever. I don't know. It took it took me a long time when I first started just getting into like the whole you know commander EDH when it was when I was more playing like the casual. I still play it from time to time, but I kind of focus more on the one versus one side. I mean, you kind of just look through, and if you see something interesting, you just note it, and then you kind of narrow it down from there. I mean, there's tons of commanders, so it was, like, actually kind of, like, uh, too much selection. And then I, you feel like if you narrow it down, it makes it a lot easier. I probably do it wrong, but I almost always build my decks and then put the commander in at the end, which oh. is probably why I never cast my commander, but just yeah. kind of like, eh, that's oh. the right color. Is it like kind of somewhat on theme that's... with my deck? That'll work. <laughs> yeah, so you I... build like traditional Grixis good stuff and then just throw like Nekuzar in there. Why not? Like you might make someone draw some cards. Yeah, basically. Basically more what I do too. <laughs> I, I build oh, my deck with is... the theme in mind and then I find the commander that fits that. And oftentimes it becomes some combination of partners <laughs> because of that. Wow. <laughs> uh, like one of Lord... my first commanders was Stonebro. Stonebrow. 
I called him Stone Bro. <laughs> it was Stone Brow. Uh, the Crow Sand something. It was like from. It was one of those weird legends from Time Spiral. You can always find a ton of is those that, there. Is that we, the one that lets you tap to a Druidad mana? Or is that a. No, is that that's Seaton Crow Sand Protector. Okay. We, we've played. We've played him somewhere before because I something he's like a five name. mana three three and get something oh, like plus two plus two and trample or it's something. It's the like trample that. lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what it is. Okay, now yeah. I know what you mean. All right, Lord Wormsbane, what's the best place for Crested Sun Mare post rotation? UW tokens, Esper control, or not viable because of red hate? Um, to be fair, it's a lot harder to deal with it now. That is a five five. I mean, it kind of dodges a lot of removal. That's true. Ah, jeez. I'm not sure what the right way of going about it is. We lost a lot of the easy life link option, so it might be some sort of, like, hidden stockpile, token-y, you have anointed priests yeah. to gain life when tokens enter the battlefield. It might be the black-white tokens I, type strategy. I think it could slot into Monument. I mean, all the legions landing, like, all those tokens have life link. That's true. Yeah. So you could play it as a top end in a monument deck as well. That makes sense. Yeah. Just try to try to as much as you can weight your deck towards things that can gain you life a little bit. Because yeah. you don't. It's not like you need to make a horse every turn. If you can make no. like one horse, it's a good deal. Good. And if you make two horses, it's insane. So yeah, I mean it's pretty good on its own. Like even right like like you said, if you don't make a horse right away, it's still a five minute five five. And I or, think that's life like that. Uh, arcane adaptation make all your stuff indestructible by making them right, all horses right. <laughs> don't really <laughs> do, that. do that but Something it crazy. sounds fun <laughs> next question sinfoid any chance we could see an index for one of each card on moto to see what effect if any arena is having um maybe not an index but maybe something that shows this uh because there are a ton of cards on sure. moto and tracking every single card is actually uh, pretty intensive, but maybe if we just sum it up and say this is the value of every card of Moto, uh, we can see. So yeah, something interesting that uh, we'll think about adding. Next question, Desi Nohe, why is blue so bad in modern? It bums me out that blue has been reduced to cantrips and snappy. Blue mage lives matter. <laughs> is blue that bad though? I mean, it is true that cantrips and snapcaster are mostly what you see from blue decks but control decks are kind of on the rise a little bit we saw jeskai do really well at the last scg event blue white's doing well that shadow I, you don't call it a blue deck but the grixis build is playing snapcasters and the cantrips so a storm is near the top of the format and that's definitely half blue but that again it's a cantrip thing so i think that's just what blue does well i think you would say the same thing about legacy honestly like 75 percent of the format is blue but you're in blue for cantrip snapcaster and force of will like it's not like there's a huge variety to what blue does in eternal format so i think it's just like what blue is yeah i would say black or maybe white are underrepresented i don't know blue is pretty up there i guess the, all the colors are pretty equal like, Storm is a big deck, all the control variants, uh, all the Grixis decks. So I think blue is actually up there. I don't know what people are looking for. People are looking for, like, that hard lock, Drago counter deck and not, like, Jeskai burn decks or something like that, right? So I think it's pretty strong. Uh, we're getting Opt. I asked a lot of people if they're going to play Opt uh, at FNM this week, and uh, it's pretty mixed. Some people don't like it. Some people like it. So no no conclusion yet, but maybe blue has some hope uh, with opt coming up, and you also have cryptic command as well. So and so, so I mean it's oh, good. Go ahead. Blue's good. I was just gonna say it's also worth pointing out that hardcore control is just in a hard place in modern. You have cavern of souls. You have collected companies. You have a lot of things that make the draw go style deck really hard to pull off effectively so i i don't know if there's ever much hope that we see that style of blue deck because there's just so many cards that are so good against that in modern and you have so much discard in modern yeah uh next question andrew keaton what does the value of an imprint 
no, why does the value of an in-print set vary? Shouldn't they be equal because sealed products cost the same? Hmm. That always, that's a, that is a good one. Um, I honestly don't know why stores start charging a little bit more for the older sets. I mean, probably because they can't be ordered in such a large quantity as, you know, a new set. Well, but... These are new sets, right? So in-print sets. So I guess the right, question is, like, sets. why is the set of Dragon's Maze at release, like, that price versus Ixalan at this price? So, wait, are we talking about... Like buying a booster box yeah, or the like, actual singles or like complete well, set of the I, set? I think I think the I think complete set boxes. of singles of imprint okay. sets. Like, why are they not all the same? The price? same. Oh, well, I mean, um, a, a a couple of the big things are just set size definitely plays a role into it. So you have to account for that. But then there's demand is a real issue. Like some sets are more popular and more played than others. So that I think accounts for most of it. They're just more in demand and more people want the cards from certain sets. Yeah. I did not understand. Yeah, the question, simple way yeah. is to look at demand. Like why, you know, if you look at one mythic versus another mythic, they're both equally as rare, but you know, one has a lot more demand making it, more scarce so that's why your good mythics are worth a lot more than your your bad mythics so the same thing applies to like the set as a whole if your set has lots of strong cards uh the demand for the set as a whole will be greater next question toolbar blue instant you may pay two life rather than its mana cost if you control no lands mental misstep so mm. counter spell with converted mana cost one is it still broken so free if you have no lands, otherwise it's blue. So it basically counters a one drop if you're on the draw. So I think that could work. Uh, mm. That's it's close. I think that's like pre that's pretty close. So if you're on the draw and you have this, it's very busted. If you're on right. the play and you have this, it's still pretty good. It, it's it's good enough, right? It's like a one mana counter spell. And if but you, you waste, you can just wasteland them, and then get a free <laughs> get a free cast if you want to. Well, or like it, days to pick up your land. Like yeah, there are some tricks. Days there. to pick. I think it's still pretty good. Yeah, I think you might have to. Oh, yeah, because on the on the play, it's still pretty good too. And I don't know if two life is enough. Yeah, I'm gonna lean That's on. It's pretty close though. It's pretty close though. The, yeah. The other thing is like, does it make? magic more fun like is that a card that really like if it's if it's on the edge and it doesn't necessarily make gameplay more fun or the format more fun then i would rather just not see right. it i think and i feel like that's where we are with that card i don't think we need mental misstep to make the format healthy or anything so it's probably better that we just don't have it all right next question v3 str1 n3x I feel like that's supposed to say something. <laughs> what replaces Lumbering Falls in Teamer Energy? Also, what would you run, regular or Scarab God version? Thanks. Uh, there's really no replacement for Lumbering Falls. Um, pretty much all you have is like Botanical Sanct. What is it? Botanical whatever. Botanical Sanct Sanctum, the yeah. Fastland. I. Yeah, I think you'll probably just use a mixture of lands to fill that slot. There's not just another blue-green duel, but you could use more, like, green-red duels or some of the yeah. other colors um, to fill in that way. So that's probably the most likely. And I would definitely go Scarab God. I think Scarab God is likely. just one yeah, of the best cards in Standard. Speaking of Scarab God, I actually... So I figured out what... Uh, we were talking about this, I think, last week, or we were talking off-cast. The green-black counters version uh, was splashing blue for Scarab God. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, I actually saw them pop up on Magic League, too. So it's like basically green-black counters splash blue for Scarab God and like some, some other stuff. But that was like the main splash. Seemed good to me. Good card. Uh, it's all a right. very good card. Next question, 11 Vicious. What about against the odds, Saltai, Coco, Infect? Go wide or go home with Jank Infect? <laughs> oh, man. People love to try to trick me into playing Infect, and it, it, I, it's not going to happen, guys and girls. It's not happening. I've never seen a go... Are there enough legitimate creatures for a go wide Infect deck? <laughs> I think there's no. enough. They're just not that very good. 
Well, like, I mean, there's some... the... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you even have, like, the three mana, two, three, like, plant, like, with Infect. Like, you have a lot of different random stuff with Infect. I want to see someone cast an Overrun and win with Infect. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's not Overrun, Richard. It's Glory of the Horde or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, what that's that the Glory? way to cheat, is just play non-infect creatures and use Triumph of the Horde as your Overrun. Triumph of the Horde, there we go. There we go. Uh, oh, wait, okay, here we go. Use the Gaia's Cradle land, the Itlamok land, right? Azuri, Coco, and go wide with infect creatures and then pump your team with all your mana <laughs> and, and kill in a, a blaze of infect glory. <laughs> And wait, doesn't Azuri only pump elves though? I think I don't. Oh, know. is it only elves? Okay, I think it might only pump elves. Yeah. elves. Like you have Glistener Elf. Uh, <laughs> what else do we have? <laughs> That's like pretty much it. <laughs> no, there's like a three mana, like a something three. One oh, the Viridian Corruptor. Is that an actual yeah. elf? Yeah. Okay, you I got two elves. Yeah, We're getting there. Yep. Some phantasmal Canadian images syntax. to copy. <laughs> Next question from Canadian Syntax. Is anyone going to finish or continue the adventures of Scoops and probably better known as Saffron Olive? Uh, we release those when we get new tokens. So I guess during the next batch of tokens. Or I, I guess we can, we can do a MTG Goldfish lore series where we just chronicle <laughs> Scoops. It's like magic story, but it's just Scoop stories. Oh. We can release story cards. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, Vig SS. Will we start seeing more standard budget decks now that rotation is a while off again? Yeah, with budget magic, there's usually this kind of ebb and flow. So when a new set comes out, we usually have like a good month at least of all standard decks. And then it kind of goes to a mixture of standard and modern. And then by the end of the format, it's usually like a month of modern while we're waiting for the new cards or waiting for rotation. So we're just at the end. The episode that comes out tonight is modern, but then we'll start a big string of standard decks starting next week. So plenty of standard action to come. All right, so that's all our fish mail. Thank you to everyone who sent it in. Awesome questions, everyone. Uh, nice. We we went through those pretty quickly, and efficiently. I do we have anything left to add or uh, announcements? Wrap it up here? Announcements. Yeah, sure, sure. There's an Ixlon T-shirt for MTG Goldfish. It's dinosaurs playing magic, kind of like dogs playing poker. Check it out on the site. We have a live episode of Commander Clash this week. Uh, it's on Wednesday the 27th, 6 p.m. You can actually watch every player's point of view on Twitch, so you can follow whoever you like and watch a live episode. It's going to be Ixalan. And finally, Rotation is this week. Ixalan is being released. Uh, rotation is happening. So brand new standard. Uh, you can check out all the new decks and stuff on the site as they appear. Uh, and enjoy the new dinosaurs and pirates, I guess. Oh, nice. actually, you just mentioned uh, rotation. So this weekend will be the first SCG event of the new standard format. So since we're kind of short today, any predictions? Give me one good prediction for week one of Ixalan standard. Don't say Brand. Ramanon, Brad, or Team or oh. Energy. Something, something different, something surprising. Is there anything? Pirates? You know... I don't know. Okay, so not ramen, not red, not energy. I do think Monument can be back in a really good spot. Um, you know, you lost Archangel Avacyn. Like, you lost, you lost like, some higher-end stuff. You lost, like, some stuff. But I think it was replaced by a lot of good things, too. Like, Legion's Landing and some other good, like, explosive starts with... Um, you get like servo expedition like you get a lot of different decent stuff like it's really easy to flip that land and then easily ramping into because like richard said last cast I mean, you still have to realize you're, you're it's basically rampant growth at the same time that's why it's much easier to play like crested sun mare and all that stuff so it could really flood the board quickly and maybe that you know has an edge against red plus cast out is in white so that's going to be really important I'm going to go Marionette Master. Not going to say it's going to win the tournament, but I'm a, we're going to have a breakout. Marionette Master treasure token is going to be like the breakout talk of the tournament. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, I've been starting to see that. I, I just don't know if it's there yet. Like, I just don't know. It's just it, like it definitely five tokens, cool. Marionette Master, 20 damage. Like, it seems super easy to set that up. 
Yeah. We'll see. Richard? Pirates. Okay, pirates. <laughs> We're going to see right. pirates. We're going to see some tribal. We're, Wizards has been pretty good at pushing whatever their theme is, so we'll see either pirates or dinosaurs. Also, I, I don't know. It's definitely going to be blue base. I don't know what colors it will be, you know, it'll settle on for this week, but there are a lot of flyers. Like, <laughs> there, there are a ton of creatures with flying, and I feel like we're going to see... Some combination of Jace and Heart of Kiran and like other like oh, giant flying. You're creatures. still on the Jace plan. I don't. <laughs> my I, prediction I, is we will see zero Jace. That is my I, prediction. I, I'm just saying. I think there's something there. That's all Favor, I'm saying. Like riddle form. Wins. Like that thing could get pretty crazy. Favorable wins. It's gonna happen. Oh, if Jace yeah. is the breakout card of this format, I'm gonna oh. be so sad. <laughs> I mean, oh. I'm never leaving the, the door open. <laughs> I'm just leaving the door open. That's all I'm doing. I'm just leaving it open. It's like Jace, next week, Jace is, is like $60. Through. And we're like, why did no one see this coming? It's the best card of all time. <laughs> Listen, Jace just needs to walk through the door. I'm just, I cracked it open. Just just walk right through. <laughs> but then you're going to target him. You have to sacrifice him. Oh. <laughs> I just want like Jaceception to happen. Uh, at SCG, I just want like ten Jaces out at the same time with like fifty-two two bears. Wait, <laughs> is there? Is it make a token or is it just make a copy of Jace? What is it? You make a copy that's not legendary. Two, isn't it? Two token yeah, it's copies. Two. It's but, two. So, yeah. so token is there a Jace token? Wow, that's actually a really. Good I have not Did seen a Jace token. I have not seen I have one. Not but seen is one there either. one? There must be one if it's a uh, Jace token. If right? there's no Jace token, that would be really shameful. I'm very curious as to what it looks like or. What happened? I didn't see one at all over the weekend. I'm assuming if someone pulled it, they would post it. That yeah, it seems like cool. we would have heard about that by now. Uh, Maybe they didn't make a token because hey. they want people to buy multiple copies of Jace to use as tokens. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you that's why you know Jace will go to $60. You got to buy, <laughs> no, like, Jace. three in case you <laughs> You have it. to buy three. Yeah. Actually, n better yet, no Jace token because it's your F&M token. Ooh. Oh, there you go. see, that could see? be too soon. We're, I, I we're on the guys. month of uh, fatal you. push, and you're gonna tell me oh. about <laughs> tokens. But if if it, you're going to make a token for F and M, that has to be one, like right. Except the only people that could use it are people that play Chase. <laughs> Yeah, not not much. It'll be Chaz. It's yeah. the only the only well, what, person. You could say the same thing about anyone else. Like if you don't play Legion's Landing, what's the one one vampire? Gonna you could play Soren. You could play other things that make one There's one vampires. There's no Soren anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's about gonna wrap things up for this week. Um, short episode. Thanks for sticking with us and listening. Uh, this is going to be the MTG Goldfish Crew signing out. We'll see you all next time, and there's plenty to talk about.